Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Nihongo Master Podcast. I'm your host Azra and I'm very excited to be here with you today. For this podcast episode, the topic will be Matsuri, Japanese festivals. There's always something going on every month, whether it's a wild dancing celebration or a time of paying somber respects. Japanese Matsuri religiously follow the seasons and all of their natural changes. Nature is basically the root of Japanese traditions. Speaking of religion, there's also another key aspect. In Japan, Shinto and Buddhism are the two most popularly practiced ones, and a large number of people even consider themselves to be part of both. Japanese festivals are more often than not a Buddhist or Shinto event. Today I'll be highlighting one Japanese matsuri for each season, introducing the background, practices, and traditions, and also talking about some of the key festival language. Keep your ears tuned for some useful and interesting vocabulary related to each matsuri as we go along. The first on our list of Japanese festivals is the summer festival, Obon, which takes place from August 13th to August 16th every year. It's this time of the year where every area of Japan turns tranquil. This Japanese summer festival is all about family, reflecting on one's family roots while welcoming back the ancestors' spirits to the world of the living. In that sense, being a time when spirits walk the streets, Obon is a little like Halloween, but that's as far as the similarities go. Plenty of old Japanese ghost stories are set during this time of year, but it's a much more solemn affair overall. In both Chinese and Japanese culture, ancestor worship is a pretty big deal. Although this is one of the most significant Japanese Buddhist matsuri nationwide, it's not a public holiday. However, most companies and shops do close down for the event. Obon starts off with the practice of mukaebi, lighting welcoming fires on the doorstep to guide the returning spirits home on the first day of the festival. If welcoming the ghosts of your in-laws into your home sounds like a total nightmare, don't worry. They're just back to chill for a few days, then they'll be on their way. Another early Obon tradition for Japanese families is ohaka mairi, the custom of visiting their family graves. Most of the time, they will clean them up, kind of like an annual ritual, as well as pray for their departed loved ones' peaceful rest in the afterlife. Part of the early preparation is decorating the altars dedicated to family members with tablets, flowers, fruits, and even wagashi, which is what you call traditional Japanese sweets. This is done to offer them some of the things that they enjoy during the time on earth. Some families even offer a can of Sapporo beer. One extra tradition which you only really see people in the countryside getting involved in is preparing figurines of horses using cucumbers and cows using eggplants, both with wooden sticks for legs. This is to symbolize that the horse will assist the spirits in returning home quickly while the cow will take them back to the heavens slowly. The second and third days are for Kuyo, the Japanese word for a tradition of holding a memorial service for the dead. Families who follow the tradition might invite a Buddhist priest to their homes for the service. If not, a visit to the temple or shrine does the trick as well. After a prayer recital, family members have lunch together while telling stories of the dearly departed. It's no ordinary lunch though. It's traditionally in the style of Shoujin Ryori, a fully vegetarian cuisine developed in the temples of Japan. On Obon, the meal usually has stewed beans, spinach with soy sauce and sesame, and pickled cucumbers. Concluding the Obon festival, the fourth and final day is when the okuribi, a ceremonial bonfire to see off the spirits, takes place. Sometimes, it's not just a bonfire. In some areas of Japan, the Japanese will also organize Bon Odori dances that were originally performed for the deceased, but now has become a symbol of summer festivals in general. The Bon dance has over 600 years of history and is a kind of folk entertainment. Another final day tradition is the practice of writing messages on paper lanterns and floating them away on rivers and the sea to guide the spirits off. The image of lit up lanterns on water has become an iconic one for this summer festival. After that, you can comfortably let loose in your own home again, without worrying that your great-great-grandma is judging you from beyond the pale. 
Obon is one of the few Japanese festivals that are less about entertainment and more about quality time with family. Regardless of how busy one's schedule is, this Japanese summer matsuri brings the people back to their hometowns and with people they hold dear. Okay, so here's the three key pieces of vocab to take away from Obon. Ohaka maeri Visiting family tombs to sweep and tidy them. Kuyo, a ceremony to memorialize the deceased. Okuribi, the bonfire which sends the spirits back to the afterlife. Heading on into autumn, our next Japanese festival is Tsukimi, which means moon viewing, a traditional ceremony to express gratitude as well as pray for a successful seasonal harvest. The exact date of this matsuri varies each year. It falls on the 15th day of the 8th month of the traditional Japanese lunar calendar. In modern terms, this means it's usually between mid-September and the beginning of October. The night of the full moon during this period is called the Jugoya, and the full moon on this night is known as Meigetsu, the harvest moon, the most beautiful moon of the whole year. Some believe that this Japanese festival dates as far back as the Nara period of 710 to 794 AD. Initially, Tsukimi was a moon viewing party for the aristocratic elite who would hold gatherings on boats to listen to music and recite tanka poetry under the moon's reflection. By the 1600s, it became popular even with the commoners. Now, Tsukimi is celebrated in a rather solemn manner. Some Japanese people even repeat the customs and practice for a few days leading up to the full moon, rather than just on the night itself. Even when the moon is not visible, celebrations are still ongoing. In this case, the moon is then referred to as Mugetsu, or Ugetsu, to mean no moon or rain moon. During this autumn festival, some people visit shrines and burn incense, as well as make food offerings of their harvest to Shinto gods. Decorations take up quite a chunk of the traditional customs of this matsuri. The most common one is decorating a vase with susuki, which is pampas grass that's usually at its tallest in the fall, along with other autumn flowers and placing them at home or near the area for moon viewing. You'll often see them arranged in the ikebana style, a kind of traditional flower arrangement with a tradition that dates back to the 7th century. Susuki is used because it resembles rice plants, and most of the time, there are at least 5 to 10 plumes to represent a bountiful harvest. Decorating the moon viewing area with this grass is believed to protect the area from evil, and decorating the roofs with them acts as an offering to the moon god. There are also taro bulbs with a few shoots to represent a prosperous family, as well as stacked dango, white dumplings made of rice, of 15 to represent the 15th of the month, or 12 to represent the months of the year. Dango are used specially because the whiteness and roundness are said to represent the beauty of the moon. But these white dumplings aren't just for decoration, they're also eaten as part of the festival customs. Unlike the style served at other times of the year, these tsukimi dango are not skewered and seasoned, but instead served plain. Eating them on the night of the full moon is believed to bring good health and happiness. Other foods that are associated with Tsukimi festival, chestnuts known as kuri and kabocha, which are Japanese pumpkins, are also served for this matsuri. You've probably heard of the man on the moon, but the Japanese see things a little differently. They say the pattern of the moon's craters look like an image of a rabbit pounding rice into mochi rice cake paste with a mallet. In folklore, it's said that the rabbit landed his ticket to the moon not by hitchhiking on Apollo 11, but he was taken there by the mythical man on the moon. The story goes that the moon man visited Earth dressed as a beggar to ask the animals for food, and the rabbit was willing to throw himself on a fire and roast himself alive, so he was rewarded with a one-way trip to the moon. Be warned, 99 times out of 100, trying to cook yourself for charity doesn't have such a pleasant ending. So be sure you're speaking to the moon man before you go throwing yourself in any ovens. 
whether it's for saying hi to the mochi pounding rabbit or to celebrate a successful seasonal harvest, Tsukimi is a Japanese festival with rich tradition. If you find yourself in Japan at this time, make sure to set aside the night for a relaxed evening of upward glazing. If you want to know more about the richness of Japanese culture, or even interesting Japanese folklore and mythology like the rabbit in the moon, head over to our Nihongo Master blog, where there are tons of articles that talk about all of these topics and more. Anyway, here are the three key pieces of vocab for Tsukimi. Meigetsu, the harvest moon. Ikebana, the traditional style of Japanese flower arrangement used. Mochi, the delicious rice paste which the rabbit is mashing on the moon. The next on the list of Japanese festivals is Shogatsu, the Japanese New Year festival that takes place during winter. This matsuri is fairly on par with the Obon festival in terms of importance. In fact, the majority would consider Shogatsu to be the most important celebration in the whole year. The celebrations are nothing like New Year's in the West. The actual New Year's Day itself is called Ganjitsu and is recognized as a public holiday. But the festivities itself start well before the 1st of January and run through January 7th or even January 15th for some regions. Most companies and businesses are actually closed from December 29th till January 4th. Even some supermarkets are not opened on January 1st. But the ones that do hold New Year's Day special sales, which also involves offering the seasonal consumer tradition fortune bags called Fuko Bukuro. In these bags, there's an array of different merchandise, and shoppers aren't allowed to check what's in it until they purchase it. The traditions of Shogatsu are a combination of expressing gratitude for the past year and wishing for health and prosperity for the upcoming year. Many people travel back to their hometowns to spend time with family and loved ones. Kids are given small money gifts known as Otoshidama as one of the traditions of Shogatsu. The few days before the actual New Year's Day are set aside for preparations. Before the last day of the year, known as Omisoka in Japanese, New Year's Eve for us, households traditionally prepare for the arrival of the New Year gods, Toshigami, by cleaning their homes, redecorating using seasonal decorations, and preparing holiday meals. Osechi Ryori is the traditional New Year meal that consists of various dishes associated with prosperity, health, and longevity. It's often presented in layered lacquer boxes and consumed on the first three days of the New Year when everyone is off kitchen duties. Because it takes quite a bit of time and effort to come up with a New Year spread, most Japanese people just order Osechi Ryori sets. These are available to order as early as in October, allowing customization and requests. Even though New Year spreads can be quite flexible and creative, one dish that is a must in the Osechi Ryori is Ozoni, a traditional soup with mochi as well as vegetables. The most important practice of Shogatsu is Hatsumode, it refers to the first shrine or temple visit of the year to pray for good luck. It can be done in the first three days of the new year, but many reserve the very first day for Hatsumode, as soon as the clock strikes midnight. Any shrine or temple is okay, but there are those who travel to major places of worship like Meiji Shrine in Tokyo or the Kawasaki Daishi in Kanagawa Prefecture. The prayer during Hatsumode involves providing an offering. Saisen in Japanese. This is when coins are tossed into offertory boxes known as the Saisen Bako. Then, visitors can draw a fortune paper called the Omikuji. If you receive a bad fortune, tie it to a pine tree. Pine in Japanese is Matsu, and it sounds the same as the Japanese word for the verb to wait, Matsu. So the idea is that your bad fortune will wait around the pine tree rather than following you home. On January 2nd, the Imperial Palace is open to the public to pay respects to Japan's royal household, as well as to hear the Emperor addressing the crowd of well-wishers. This is the one out of two days that the Imperial Palace is open, the other being the Emperor's birthday. Of course, expect a bigger crowd than usual. Another important tradition of Shogatsu are the greetings. 
whether it is saying out loud or sending out New Year greeting cards known as Nengajo to relatives, friends and acquaintances, it is a practice that the Japanese religiously abide by. The second the calendar switches to the new year, the first act of business is to address family members. Akemashite omedetou gozaimasu! Loosely translating to, Happy New Year! Of course, just like in countries all over the world, the Japanese love to party till the first morning sun of the year comes up as well. It's just that, passing out in Shibuya after one too many asahis is a comparatively new tradition for this festival, but still widely practiced. Here are the three key pieces of vocab for Chogatsu. Ganjitsu, New Year's Day. Hatsumode, the important first shrine visit of the year. Omikuji, the fortune telling slips sold at temples. On to our last, but definitely not the least of the Japanese festivals on the list the Spring Festival, Hanami, which translates to flower viewing. It's quite similar to the autumn festival, Tsukimi, but instead of appreciating the moon, this spring matsuri is all about appreciating the blooming cherry blossoms called sakura. This Japanese festival has quite a long history. It initially started way back in the Nara period, around 710 to 794. It only became a huge festivity when Emperor Saga and the Imperial Court started throwing picnics and parties, especially for flower viewing in the Heian period. Regardless of social status and hierarchy, from samurais to commoners, all of the people of Japan would go out and celebrate the blooms of these pale pink flowers. The blossoming of these delicate and radiant flowers doesn't just symbolize the beginning of spring. Initially, sakura were used to predict the harvest cycles for that year. Farmers kept an eye out for the blooming of sakura to indicate to them the ideal time to plant their crops. Throughout time, it has become the representation of the wabi-sabi philosophy a Japanese aesthetics that centers itself on the acceptance of imperfection and temporariness while acknowledging the beauty in them, as well as Shinto ideals of impermanence and renewal. The blooming of the sakura symbolizes human mortality to many Japanese people. Just like the flower, it is beautiful and brilliant during the strongest bloom, but withers when the time comes, reflecting its fragility. There's a Buddhist notion of Mono no aware, which has a loose meaning of bringing awareness to the impermanence of things, which leads to the heightening awareness of their beauty. This reminds us of how short and precious life is. A lot of Japanese art that features sakura uses them to symbolize this. The sakura zen sen, which means cherry blossom front, refers to the wave of warm weather that comes in from the south indicating that it's time for the blooming of these sakura trees. Sakura season isn't a set period of time every year. It constantly changes and also depends on the exact location in Japan. Certain regions in Japan get warmer earlier than others. Northern Japan gets the late blooming cherry blossoms in late April. The central and southern part are lucky enough to get the early bloomers. And areas like Tokyo and Osaka are from late March onwards. Hanami is a much-awaited festival, so much that there are forecasts for it. Predictions for the kaika, blooming of the cherry blossoms, to the mankai, full bloom, are covered on the national news. When the sakura trees bloom, they can last as little as a few days. The Japanese people set down their mats under the blooming sakura, most of the time with a couple of cartons of omeshu, plum wine, and bento boxes packed with food and chat the afternoon away while appreciating the beauty of the flowers. The best places include city parks, which often have hundreds of blooming sakura trees, especially the ones near castles, temples, and shrines. During the full bloom, these parks will be a patchwork of blankets practically laid out end to end. That's how busy it can get! The picnics can be anything from relaxed family affairs, to huge gatherings of students out for a full day of drinking. It's one of the few times you'll see the Japanese really let loose en masse. But as we looked at, it's not all about partying and relaxing. There's so much history and symbolism behind the fragility of the sakuras 
of this hugely popular Japanese festival. Here are three key pieces of vocab for hanami. Sakura, the cherry blossom trees which this festival celebrates. Mankai, the full bloom period. Umeshu, deliciously sweet Japanese plum wine. So there you have it. Four seasonally inspired, historically rich, culturally significant Japanese festivals which show the breadth of the culture here. They show how the Japanese respect nature, how they view life and death, and how closely to their hearts they hold the age-old tradition of getting very, fantastically, stupendously drunk. With each seasonal festival, I hope you caught a couple of new Japanese words to add into your vocabulary book. If you're inspired to pick up some more Japanese for yourself, you can find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and the official website to learn more. Thank you so much for listening in, and I'm looking forward to the next one. I hope you join me then as well. Mata ne!